Hey Cubs, welcome back to the channel. Yes, we are. So yeah, a few times in the Discord server that I'm a part of, it's come up um, people wanting to know how to uh, seam rip a builder bear. And I thought, as I've got the perfect candidate for this, I'd record it as a bit of a demo for you guys. Um, this is just my method of doing it. Um, and let me just grab him. This is Jill. Here's my husband's cheetah. And yeah, he just needs a quick restitch at the back. So let's get going. So to do this, you're going to need four things, uh, starting with your seam ripper, thread. Now for this, I use top thread and your needle. And it's important to have a sharp needle. I hadn't realized until I purchased some new ones just how blunt my original needles were. Um, because the new ones just go through the fabric like a knife through butter and it just makes life so much easier and you're less likely to hurt yourself. And then also a pair of fabric scissors and this is just simply for cutting your thread. Um, yeah, and it's always good to keep your fabric scissors separate from your other craft scissors. I'm just going to grab these out the way and get Jill. Now, Jill is an older builder bear. He's from 07 and he is actually second hand. As you can see, he has been restitched, but it's a little tight. Um, and yeah, I just I want to redo it for him. Um, and it's a bit messy where you got the fur pulled in and I just want to tidy that up for him. So what you're going to do is grab either side of the seam and just give it a gentle tug until you can see the thread. Um, it may take a little bit of working. Um, just keep going until you can find it. Once you do like here, just insert the seam ripper and give it a tug and that is it's that simple you just pull it apart you may have to um, snap the thread a couple of times it just depends on how tight it is um, and yeah it just makes cleaning it up easier you know it's best to remove the old thread um, which yeah I'm doing here now, I do apologize I had to swap and do this as a voiceover it I did originally record the sound um as I was filming but yeah the quality just wasn't the best and I always forget just how creaky my chair is so that doesn't help but the other thing with Jill that I wanted to do for him was to put his original heart back in so I'll just pop that in there and also he had his original tag now, for him, it's not really necessary. Um, it's just more a nostalgia kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I did put that back inside. Again, just cleaning up some of the older thread. Um, I reckon he'd been re-sewn a couple of times, not just when I took him in to be restuffed.
as I mentioned before, I prefer to use top thread for this. You can use cotton thread, but uh, if this is for a bear that you intend on cuddling a lot, I recommend at minimum top thread or upholstery thread. Those are your thicker threads and they're going to survive the cuddling process. Now, before I actually start sewing, I tie a knot in the end of the thread. Um, and I do a double knot because otherwise you're just going to pull it straight through because um, the hides tend to have slightly bigger holes. And yeah, I come out a little way from the hole itself it's just to give you something to anchor to. And then I believe this is the ladder stitch. I'm not very good with the names of stitches at the moment. Um, and you just work your way down. Now on some of the newer bears, you can see like here with pancake, um, there's a lining and there are holes done as a guide for the machine that would have put in the initial thread. You can follow that if you want, um, but you don't have to. And again, it's not always present on the older bears, certainly not on the cheetahs. And yeah, you just go in one side, straight out below it, and then swap to the other side of the hole, and you go in and out again. And I'm probably not explaining this very well, but I'm hoping the visual is enough. And as I mentioned, I like to give the tail a tug and this just helps line everything up, especially when you've got a highly patterned bear like the cheetahs, where you want to try and line the spots up um, so they don't look quite so wonky. Um, it really helps with that and it helps um, prevent gathering whilst you're stitching. Um, and you know, you're not going to end up with a really wrinkled back either, which, you know, again, you want to try and avoid that. Also, as I go, I like to um, just run the needle through the stitching I've already done. This just helps pull out any of the fur that's been pulled down as I sew. Obviously, you want to try and avoid that as much as possible to make it look as tidy as you possibly can manage. And yeah, it, it takes a bit of doing, um, particularly, again, with the older bears that have thicker hides. Not all of them do. But certainly the cheetahs do. Um, so yeah, just take your time with it. And you may find, like I did whilst doing Jill here, you may have to go back a stitch. Um, and which for that, all I do is I unthread the needle and use the needle itself just to pull the stitch out again. And just redo it. And it was just because the fabric had pulled in a way I didn't want it to. And constantly going back um, removing any of the fur that's been pulled in. I've also noticed um, whilst working on all these bears for the rescue squad is that it's not just builder bears that have a seam down the back. You'll find that pretty much all bears do. Um, not everyone. I think Breeze was the only one that didn't have one and I did have to snip his back open but you know I did that very carefully and sewed it shut again very carefully making sure not to pull in any of the fur and you would never know you know it so long as you take your time yeah you can make these things look really neat and tidy and professional you know for lack of a better word and yeah it, it is a good thing to know especially if you're a collector um and you know some people do just collect them to display others collect them and cuddle them um and you know all bears get loved and when they do they will sometimes need maintenance um they need washing restuffing restitching all sorts so be, being able to know how to do this is really helpful. Um, when you wash any kind of bear, it's best to unstuff it if you can before you wash it. And that way, um, you know, it's going to dry a lot quicker. Um, yeah, and 
obviously if it dries quicker it's not going to end up with a funky smell some of mine have done like with jack and with jill actually um they both took a very long time to dry even drying them in the sun i let them dry naturally don't have access to a tumble dryer and certainly not one that would have a cold enough setting that wouldn't damage the fur um but what i found can be quite helpful is if you just give them a quick spray with a body spray and brush that through their fur and you're leaving them out for a day or two anyway after they've been restuffed they smell just fine you know it doesn't linger which is good and what I'm doing here where I put my finger in the hole is just to see how much I've got left to sew closed because obviously as you go it's harder to tell uh, just by looking and I don't poke it poke my finger in far it's just enough to see where the hole is and I will do a couple of extra stitches um, once I've gone past the end of the hole just to make sure and then what I will do is to tie it off is I go in away from the original hole one more stitch and then away from the original hole and just loop through and I do that three times just to make sure it stays nice and secure now this is something I was told when I worked at Builder Bear I don't know how accurate it is but I, I mean this is 12 years ago so hopefully it is accurate but when you do a knot like this um, over time it sort of retracts inside the bear so it won't stay obvious I mean depending on the length of the fur of your bear anyway it won't be that obvious in the first instance and again it's just making sure you keep the fur out of the way and again it will make it less obvious but I hope this has been helpful for you guys look forward to seeing you again in the next one don't forget to subscribe and I'll definitely do some more tutorials like this one if wanted there's plenty of more plenty more rescue squad episodes coming up and we're gonna have a lot of fun all right and I will see you in the next one